Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll start our media availability this morning, and our first driver up is A.J. Allmendinger, driver of the number 47 Bushes Beans Chevrolet. And Thanks for choosing me first, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah thanks for that. Bring up the best first, right? Something like that. <laughs> but A.J., obviously, you know, everybody knows about your great win a couple weeks ago, and now you're here at Bristol. Um, what are your thoughts coming into this race this weekend and, uh, of course, getting it ready for Richmond? Um, you know, I think it's just it's a matter of uh, each week for us just trying to get better. You know, last week I thought was actually uh, almost as satisfying is is winning at Watkins Glen. Just the mere fact that the first week in Michigan or the first race in Michigan, uh, we struggled so bad and uh, and to go out there we ran top ten all day, um, finished thirteenth, but thought we were we were a lot better than that all day. So uh, it's just kind of the, the the same idea of going out there trying to get better each week. Uh, you know, whether it's here at Bristol or, or next week at a, a mile and a half, which is important in the chase, you know, just, just as a team right now, each week trying to step up our game. So when we get to Chicago, uh, you know, we feel like we're at least competitive and, and have a shot to go into the chase and make some noise. So, uh, you know, that's just our focus. We don't really change anything different each week now. You know, it's the same plan. Nothing's changed since uh, Watkins Glen. Uh, you know, I think – it's been pretty cool because with the with the win and and the added a uh, little bit of money and we can go out there and possibly test add a couple of resources that we need to get better in the chase so things like that are really good but uh, just come here and, and try to enjoy it but uh, stay on stay on the plan and just keep working to get better. All right, we'll open it up for questions. If you'll raise your hand, okay, we'll start over here. Start here, Sharon. Give us your name and affiliation, please. Matt Weaver, PopularSpeed.com. Is there a certain, you know, position in the standings or results or pace that you need to see out of your team by the time you get done with Richmond to feel like you're ready for the chase? Um, you know, I think I, I wouldn't – I don't like putting, you know, a certain result because it, it, the way these races play out, you can't always judge by that. You know, last week, like I said, you know, we finished 13th, but – we, we ran no worse than, I think, ninth or 10th all day, just had a bad restart at the end. But I think it's just going out there at each racetrack and just being competitive, you know, being in the mix. Michigan, we were inside the top 15, top 10 every practice session. I felt like our speed was good. Uh, you know, so it's really just the same thing. I, I You know, you want to get the best finish possible. If there's an opportunity to win, you're going to try to win it. Uh, but in general, I think just uh, – feeling like when we leave the racetrack at the end of the weekend saying, okay, you know what, we were competitive and, and uh, you know, we learned some stuff. So that to me is what's important about going into the chase. We know when it comes to chase time, you know, when you put the, uh, the championship contenders, label each team, you know, we're probably at the bottom of the list. But, you know, I feel like if we do the right things, as I said, we're going to have a few more resources than we've had the last couple of months, might be able to use our last test. Uh, at a mile and a half racetrack, so things like that are all positive. So, um, just going out there and, and uh, feeling like each weekend we're getting better and getting closer to the front of the grid. Okay, the gentleman right beside you, and then we'll go over to Mark and then Jeff. Yeah, AJ Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, you said after Watkins Glen, what a thrill it was to win. You you just never knew if you would win a Sprint Cup race. Uh, would you mind talking a moment about? Were there times the past couple of years when you even thought you would be back in Sprint Cup and talk a moment about your road back to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've documented it a lot. You know, for me, it's just, um, you know, there was times I didn't know it was going to happen. But, you know, I, I've learned in life, really, you know, you, you just take every day as it comes. And uh, I've always been a guy that's tried to plan ahead and, and look forward, What you know, what's what's happening next instead of really what's in the moment. So. To me, that's that's what it's about. It's just enjoying enjoying the ride now and and having fun. I love this race team. Uh, you know, Tad and Jody, they've made me feel so much like family, like one of their own. Uh, you know, Brad Doherty, uh, to have him on my side to where he's an ex-athlete. So the the times of of questioning, uh, you know, whether it's my ability or just the things that go around, just having a, a constant. Uh, passion when it comes to racing and, and the same with him for basketball and for racing you know the things that I can talk to him about have really helped me out so uh, I just really enjoy the team and, and enjoy the the surroundings that I have right now uh, that was stuff in the past that I probably struggled with a lot so um, now just looking forward and, and enjoying the moment you know I've tried to enjoy the whole process of 
of how we got here. And, and uh, you know, as I said a million times, I'm way better for it over the last couple of years. But just um, now looking towards the future, just uh, knowing that this race team, uh, it, it's it's my race team. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm one of the leaders of the team and I can walk in the shop and we got the winning banner and makes me feel special that uh, we did that together, you know, and, and a lot of the, a lot of the guys in the shop, it was either their first Sprint Cup win, uh, or they've had wins in the past, and they said that this one meant the most to them because of of how hard we've all worked as a group and as a family. So, that to me is what I enjoy the most, and uh, just trying to trying to constantly get better every day and figure out what I need to do outside and inside the car, whether it's life or just racing to to keep getting better. Okay, we go over to Mark. Mark Gar Mark Garrow. Mark here. Hello. Bueller. Okay. Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. Mark Garrow, PRN. I think it's up there a little bit now. How glad are you that you don't have to hit a Hail Mary pass with three races to go? How happy are you you don't have to try to hit one here at Bristol? Well, yeah, I mean, to to yeah, it's, it's funny because I never – each weekend, I never really thought about, you know, oh, this is a Hail Mary. We have to win this, you know. The, the I started this year, and it's the same thing I'm saying now, really, about going into the chase. It was just trying to get better. Now, Watkins Glen, a place like Sonoma and Watkins Glen, just with my background, uh, we knew those were going to be probably better chances to win a race than, say, maybe going to Michigan and winning a race to, to make the chase. Uh, but I never looked at we have to win to make the chase. I just wanted to keep getting better. And wherever that put us at the end of the year, then that's that's what I wanted. So I, I never – I guess I never really put that pressure to say, oh, you know, we got to win to make the chase. You know, I knew at Watkins Glen waking up Sunday morning, you know, we do the right thing, we're going to have a shot at winning this race. Uh, but for me, it was never about making the chase. I just wanted to achieve my dream that I've worked hard for the last seven or eight years and win a Sprint Cup race and – for Tad and Jody especially, for what they started in a barn 20 years ago to get to this point now and, and have them as Sprint Cup team owner winners, uh, that's what was most satisfying for me. The chase is a bonus, really. And, um, you know, as we say now at this race team that, you know, we don't want to just be in the chase to be excited about it. You know, we want to go in there and make some noise. So that's what we're working hard the next few weeks to just try to get better. With all the guys who haven't qualified yet that are either close on points or – know good teams that expected to be already in there and are not could this race be an old Bristol get 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 rough as people just try to you know figure they're you know you're down to three chances oh, I, I mean I, I believe so you know I mean I think um, but it works both ways you know the guys that that are, are working hard to uh, knowing that they have to win a race to get in and then there's you know as we saw Kurt last weekend I mean going for the win you know in our in our position to a certain degree we don't care you know for uh, for me I think it's still about trying to get better each weekend and, and, you know, having a good result helps us as a race team. But, you know, for everybody, really, if you got a chance to win, you're going to take it. So, uh, to me, I think it's going to be a fun Saturday night and, and uh, there's going to be a lot of excitement. There's going to be some desperation. And to me, that's what makes racing uh, the most fun. Okay, we'll go to Jeff. Jeff Gluck from USA Today. AJ, I don't know how much time you've had to think about this, but what do you think – guys just in general not just your race team but when once they get in the chase how are people going to approach it i mean to get past the first round you're not necessarily going to have to win so are people going to go like conservative back to points racing like old school chase i guess or you know do you do you see them taking chances and trying to get a win to advance how do you think it's going to all shake out i mean i think you uh, especially the, the the first two races uh you know, if there's an opportunity to win and automatically get in, I mean, that's what you're going to do just because, uh, I mean, it, it's it's real easy to go to w to one of the first three races and, and you blow up one of the races and, and all of a sudden now you're in a hole trying to uh, to make it out, you know. So I think if there's an opportunity to go win and, and automatically qualify for the next round, you're going to do everything you can. And that that's, uh, that's what makes, I think, that rule so cool is the fact that uh, you could easily go to points racing back to those three races each race just to try to get to Homestead. But uh, with the win and automatically in, you know, you could be the guy that, that thinks you're sitting good after a couple races and then you have uh, a guy that's maybe 15th or 16th going into that last race, win and knock you out. So uh, if there's an opportunity to win, I think guys are still going to try to take it and uh, they're not going to have a second thought about it. Okay, go 
over here to Brian. Brian Nelson, MRN. So um, now having been locked in, you're, you're talking a lot about improving and focusing on, on getting better. Specifically, what areas do you think uh, you need to, to trim up before, you know, if you want to make some noise in the chase, what are you working on? Well, I mean, the, uh, with the schedule, mile and a half are, are critical. You know, I think they're five out of ten races. That's where we struggled, just the bigger racetracks in general. You know, to me, that's those are the racetracks that, that resources, you know, when it comes to aerodynamics and downforce and, uh, you know, things like that, just the little things that you do to your race car that make such a big difference around those places. So that, to me, is where our struggles have been. The short tracks, we've been pretty good at. Uh, you know, the super speedway racing, you know, that, that's kind of luck of the draw, but I feel like with, uh, with the ECR horsepower, uh, you know, we've been fast at those places. We finished fifth, had a shot to win at Talladega. Uh, so it's really just been the mile and a half and, and the two-mile racetracks. You know, that's why last weekend was so satisfying, I felt like, because we had been so bad the first race there. Uh, our guys back at the shop just kind of tuning on the bodies, doing the little things to try to make the car better. We showed up to Michigan. First lap on the racetrack was a huge difference. So... Uh, if we are able to go test, you know, whether it's Chicago or Charlotte, uh, just to get some laps, work on some things. Qualifying right now is kind of where we struggle. We can have good speed in the first group, but we can't back it up the second group to, uh, to make it into the final qualifying session. And starting grid, no matter what race you're at, is, is critical. So just little things like that to keep trying to get better. You know, as I said, resources, we can uh, take a few things uh, like that, you know, with our RCR alliance that, that they've done to get better that maybe we're a little bit behind on, not because they haven't given it to us or they haven't allowed us to have it. We're just, you know, when it comes to cost and resources, we can't get it. So little things that we might be able to get now uh, for our, a Chicago car or Loudon car that we haven't been able to get before. So just little things like that. I mean, it's still going to be a lot of work, and I don't expect uh, with the added resources that we have, all of a sudden we're going to go, okay, now, now we're a race-winning car right away. But... Uh, it's stuff that's definitely going to help us learn and to go to Chicago, hopefully, and just say, all right, you know, instead of where we've been running kind of 18th to, to 25th, if we can show up and go, okay, you know, we're a 8th to 16th place car, we've improved a lot, and we can race from there. So okay. what do you take away from this weekend? I mean, what can you work on realizing that Bristol is different from just about any other track in the chase? You know, a place like this, uh, it, it's a lot of fun, and, and – you know, obviously you can't take something away from here and go, okay, you know, it's Chicago, it's going to help us. But it's just about getting better. Every weekend's about getting better. And, uh, you know, as I said, it, it's, yeah, you want to have a good result, but I just want to leave the weekend saying, you know what, we had, a, we had a competitive car, we were in the mix, and we left here feeling good about, about what we did all weekend. That's, that's what I take away every weekend, uh, and especially at a place like this that doesn't carry over to, to many racetracks. So... Uh, that's what it's all about, just trying to get better. Me inside the car, our feedback, everything in general, just being more competitive. Okay. We'll go over here, AJ, to your right to stay in, and then we'll go with Dustin. That's my left. Oh, le left. We're making a left. <laughs> okay, AJ, Stan Creek, more with RPMtonight.com. When the cameras are all shut off, when, no, when nobody's looking at the team but you and, and, and the, the owners, what do you see in the team members now – that prior to Watkins Glen, you didn't necessarily see? Um, you know, I think for all of us, really, it's, it's a little bit more being relaxed, uh, a lot more confidence. Uh, you know, everybody, and, you know, I was, it, it, for me, leading it as well. You know, we put our heart and soul into it. You know, you see it on Tad and Jody's face, Brad's face. Everybody puts so much effort into it because we have to. I mean, we're... We're a small race team, so we have to put that, that extra effort in. You know, those guys have to work that extra hour or two each day to make sure that our stuff is, is ready to go. Uh, and I think it's, it's that being satisfied, feeling some sort of accomplishment, uh, you know, because for me that's, it, it's, it's a special feeling now being able to walk in those doors and feel like I truly brought something to this team. And, that, and I feel the same emotion from everybody else. You know, there's a lot of guys that, that showed up to this team this year that were new, that took a chance on our race team, that have been on the big teams, said, you know what, no, we, we want to come here. And, and uh, you know, you talk to every one of them and ask them about Tad and Jody and Brad and, and you know, what kind of team owners they, they are. And, and every one of them 
say something sort of, you know, oh, he comes up and asks me how my newborn is, or, you know, they come up and ask me how my mom's doing, you know, something like that. It's just that family atmosphere, but together it's just feeling like we accomplished something big because we did, such a small team to go win a race. Uh, and the way we win it to be that competitive and, and have a shot to win it all day and, and come through. So um, we know we still got a lot of work to work ahead. We don't want to just sit back and say, oh, we won a race. You know, now now our team is complete and it and, uh, doesn't matter what happens. We want to keep growing together, but it's definitely uh, a good atmosphere when we walk into that shop together and when we come to the racetrack together and just how we act together. So it's a, it's a big family, and, and uh, everybody – is thrilled to be in the chase, but now that we're in the chase, we want to make some noise. Okay, now to your right, AJ. We'll go oh. to Dustin Long and close it up with Dustin. <laughs> Dustin Long, MRN.com. Um, AJ, when you look back at the win, I, I'm just curious, what are the, the, the special moment, this m moments that stand out with Brad, with Tad and Jody? And I can think of seeing Brad or as difficult it is for him to run, <laughs> trying to run to victory lane to get there as soon as possible. And I'm just wondering, what were the thing? What are the things that stand out now? A couple weeks later, whether it's in victory lane, whether it was in the motorhome lot, or, or even a couple days later, just for what it all meant for them, and 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 what you saw that most people didn't see. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the first thing is is watching the highlights of ESPN or Brad, and just in the. Uh, trying to do his job but jumping up and down and and basically trying to break Rusty's back by jumping on him uh <laughs> that was pretty pretty funny to see but I think uh you know the victory lane celebration was cool and it was fun to to share that with everybody but I more than anything stepping away from it and uh just being in the bus lot after after everything had died down and and uh, just taking a moment to say, what what happened here? You know, what just happened? Did this did this really just happen? And and seeing uh, really Tad and, and Jody's face, just knowing just a little, you know, from what I've learned from them already, just a little bit, but everything that they've went through and and the struggles that they've had uh, to see just kind of in their body language and on their face, like what what it meant to them. And that, to me, was the most satisfying thing was because uh, when they signed me here, you know, and they, they, they gave me an opportunity and took a chance on me to a certain degree just to, uh, to be able to repay them back like that and just see what it meant to them just, just in their language and, and the way they – I mean, just it was, it was almost surreal. It was happiness, but it was kind of like taken back because they didn't really believe that it happened and, and – uh, Brad TP'd my bus, which I felt was kind of wrong. I walked up, my bus had toilet paper all over the top of it. So Scott's toilet paper, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> you know, just things like that. Just the joy of, of what it truly meant to, uh, to get our first all together. Um, you know, I think that was the most satisfying thing to me was just to, to see that emotion on their face and, and their body language and this, their true, outright joy and happiness uh, was something I'll always remember. Right. AJ, thank you very much. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, guys.